So, okay, I've discussed solar systems, but that's just obviously just one part of vehicle electrics for overland vehicles. So we now have to do something substantial to the vehicle's electrics to adapt it for overland use. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. And I think what, what needs to be very clear about what we're trying to achieve in this is you have a vehicle that comes out the factory with a set of electrics in it, as we all know. We're adding an auxiliary system to this. Yes. And we really want to keep that system very separate from the main factory system. Absolutely. Because we're going back to keeping everything as simple as possible. Yeah. That means any problems we could have along the way, you can quickly diagnose the fault and most people can have a chance of repairing it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of interfere with the vehicle. Toyota and Land Rover and whoever know a lot more about vehicle electrics than your 4x4 equipment. That, the, keep them separate. Absolutely. Once you start, you, once you start cutting, cutting into it, and it's problems. Yeah, you know, huge problems. Yeah. It's the same okay. gripe I have with uh, immobilizers. They're necess Immobili necessity Im absolutely. evil. Yeah. And that's, you know, yeah. we relieve them. Yeah. So really clearly what, what we're trying to achieve on a vehicle is a very separate system and a lot of, I've seen over the years, a lot falls down in how that system is actually put into the car. It's okay. that critical. Are you talking about poor wiring? Definitely poor wiring. Poor fuses. Poor components. Low, okay. Okay. All right. Um, accessibility to actually getting to the bits you need. Getting to what? Fuses? Fuse boxes, relays, not marking them up. You're yes. stuck. Something's not working. You've now got to waste valuable time. It's either at night when you at least need a breakdown. You've got a bunch of cables and one of them is the, is, the, is the fuse for the lights that have been installed exactly. and you don't know which one it is. Okay. All right. So, 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 so putting, putting a system in the car, I think, is, as most of us know, we've all put systems into a car to a lesser or greater degree. And depending on what you want to spend, you can get better and different types of componentry. But my view is that the, if a fitment center falls down, more often than not, it's in the quality of the electrical installation. Well, I think, uh, to be fair, a lot of guys can learn a skill of bolting something to the car. But when people come with different electrical requirements, yes. it's different for every vehicle. So, the, so Yeah, but I mean, I've seen, I've seen, you know... Oh, they, totally. There's, there is no excuse for that. No and excuse. They, like this, yeah. and then they use a bit of yeah. insulation tape. I think if, if most folk who, who took their car to a fitment center understood a few of the basic essentials on the electrics mm -hmm. and actually put those requirements to the fitment center and said, I need to have my fuse box in a place that I can actually find it easily. Labeled. I need all those fuses labeled. Yeah. My relays, I don't want to pull a relay out and end with four wires that I've now got to figure out which goes on which terminal. I want it in a block. I can pull the relay out and, and it's also it marked and yes. I can put a new one in because yeah. it takes seconds to do that. Okay. It takes a lot more hassle. So yeah. that that's key. Yeah. The quality of how they run the wiring. Yeah. Where what I see holes drilled through bodywork, there's no protection on the wiring. They'll yes. sleeve it up until the bodywork. Absolutely. And then the wire goes through the bare bodywork. And, and it's where it goes through. That's absolutely. the danger point. Yeah. It's where it goes through. And more often than not, I'm looking at engine bays and I'm seeing wires that are rubbing on something. Yeah. Or they're not tied yeah. up. Not tied up. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Really, it's not difficult. It's really about looking at an electrical system and going, does this look neat and tidy? Are the terminals nicely put on? And you know, you get these terminals you can crimp on the ends of wires. Now you can get very cheap crimpers, as we all probably have used in the past. Yes, yes. We can get a decent set of crimpers. And a decent set of crimpers will crimp that terminal in two places. Yes. And if you want a, to go... It does, a that, exactly. it does a that crimp, Twice as, like opposed, that, as to opposed to just a to that just crimp. One. Yeah. So that crimped on properly, mm. and if you go properly done, a bit of heat shrink yeah. sleeving, yeah. that nicely yeah. links, That's, seals the yeah. wire. It seals the wire from Much moisture. Problems. Yeah. Moisture, yeah. absolutely. Okay. A lot of electrical components uh, and problems on electrics mm. come from bad earths. Mm. People tend to earth on the chassis and the body all over. It's a no-no, in my opinion. Take an earth from the battery to somewhere convenient, and run from plugs and lights and everything earth to that, back to that point. To that point, not using the body. Absolutely. The once you use a body, you can't trace problems as easily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your testing becomes more difficult, yeah. and the earth's never as good. I want to talk a bit about my experiences with split charge battery systems. 
Uh, this is a big. This has been a bugbear and a discussion oh, in the forums and going yeah. on and on. This is this is my experience. That um, deep cycle batteries are uh, painful things because while they're designed to be able to cycle them deeply and recharge them, while they're able to do that on a reasonably continuous basis, basis without them sulfating and being permanently damaged. Trying to get the current back into them, they're not very good at accepting current, particularly in the lower you've taken the battery down in terms of charge, the slower, not just the longer time it'll take, the slower the, it will accept that current. It's like filling a big tank. You know, you empty this tank down and exactly it takes an like, awful long time to yep. fill that tank back up. Yes. And actually, as you're getting nearer the top of the tank, it's even slower. And That's with any battery. Absolutely. But now, deep cycle. Deep cycle is almost as if, it's almost as the, the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you try and put in that, 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 that like filling a tank, Absolutely. when you try and, you turn on the hose and you've got this lots and lots of fuel, or I, in this case, lots and lots of current, the battery goes, no, and it doesn't accept it. So that's why going on a one hour game drive, hardly any current is going back into that battery yeah. and you might do a calculation I've got a high 100 amp alternator there in theory if I run it for one amp I should be getting 100 amps into the battery it's not even close to that and, in, and I've seen situations where I reckon that after a one hour drive they probably got five amp per hour on that battery for that for that whole drive and I think that's where people really the misunderstanding of what their needs are and how the system works are two worlds apart. Yes. And if we can marry that up where people can understand how the system works, then understand what their needs and usage is. Yes. They can plan their whole So power. so I'm saying that there are there are recharge products on the market which don't work with some batteries. There are other recharge when I say split charge and that is let's just go back a little bit to the split charge meaning that here we have a battery system and an auxiliary electric system separate from the car. And the reason really so I can is always so that start, can always start, start that engine. the engine. The car will work. Yeah. If my other system fails completely, my car will start and it will operate perfectly. And that's actually a life can be a life threatening situation. I've known people who've flattened all the batteries sitting in a place with an automatic in the middle of nowhere and they cannot start that car. Yeah, they've had it's it. It's actually such a big safety yeah. issue. People don't yeah. realize how important it is. Yeah to get this right. Right. So now we're talking auxiliary battery system and we've put in a deep cycle because we want to run it overnight or even two nights, run our fridges and our lights and discharge the battery and then we will drive the car and then the current will come back up. There's a trouble with deep cycle batteries. That, as I said, they don't accept the current in. Sure. Unless the voltage has been adjusted, and this is the split charge system that needs to adjust the voltage, it needs to fire higher voltage into it. I'm being simplistic, but basically this is it. If you take the voltage straight from the engine alternator, divert it into that auxiliary battery with a deep cycle battery, in my view, in what I've experienced, the deep cycle battery won't accept much current very quickly and you have to charge it for a long period of time. And I'm talking about an entire day's driving, not just an hour or two. The systems now that we're getting on the market, as you're saying, yeah. are allowing a different system. The yeah. old system was just to open a tap, let that water flow through, yeah fill the battery up yeah. at a slow, very slow yeah. pace. So I'd like to you talk about a few brand names. For example, the um, the CTEC system. Good the system. CTEC system is designed for a deep cycle battery application. It will fire a much higher voltage, okay, but it's a, it's a fixed amp. The CTEC unit will only deliver 20 amps. It cannot deliver more. It's not designed to. But because of its system, it will put 20 amps into that deep cycle battery for sure until the deep, battery, deep cycle battery is close to 90%. It's like, as you're saying, filling a fuel tank, getting that at extra last 10% does take a bit of extra time. Yeah. But the point is that a one hour game drive will actually deliver 20 amps into your battery. Sure. Okay, it's very, very efficient. That's on the deep cycle battery. Deep cycle batteries. If you take that same deep cycle battery and use, for example, the National Lunar System, which is, has got other advantages, it can actually deliver a lot more than 20, 20 amps. Absolutely. But if the battery won't accept that current, what's the point? So in that particular application, in my view, a deep cycle battery is the wrong battery for that switcher. You should use a less expensive, high cyclic battery, which will accept the current, and know that after two or so years, 
you're going to throw the batteries Change away the batteries. because you're discharging them and that is going to eventually damage them much quicker than a deep cycle. But they're cheaper batteries anyway. And you know, for most people who use their vehicles on shorter trips and shorter vacations, I think that's the way to go. You know, I, in yes, many I respects, do. you know, I've used the National Lunar System for many years. It's a very strong, robust system. I think the confusion amongst people in the market is not understanding exactly the point you've been making. And I think the normal battery, if you throw a battery away after two years and you know that you've got that reliability of a new battery on this trip and you understand how it works, it's got to be better. Because deep cycle batteries are expensive batteries to throw away when yeah. you, when you, they That's don't work. That's the whole point. The what we're really saying is match the products. Not any old battery with any old split charge system. If yes. you want to go deep cycle, you get a deep cycle recharge like the SeaTech. Okay, don't fit the National Lunar because it'll work, but it, it won't. Does work. But it won't no, it be great. But, it, but if you put in, but it, but it's not. You're it's, not getting out of the, what well, you should out of the product. Totally. But if you use a high cyclic battery and the and the National Lunar, the running cost over a running cost between the two, because one is quite a bit more expensive than the other, will probably be the same. I mean, well, when you consider not be throwing actually, a battery away, I think you're absolutely right. You yeah, know? because the SeaTech is is yeah. more expensive, yeah. and the batteries are more expensive, but it'll both, last longer. Both systems will will work very well, as you say, as understanding the application and the batteries match to the system. Mm. So it's it's very good uh, sort of understanding of what you need. Mm. Does it apply to you? It depends on your budget, it depends on how you're going to use the, the system and I think that, that and should how, help And you. the cycle of the battery, how much are you depressing, how much are you cycling that battery? Yes. If on one trip you are deep cycling the battery 30 times on one trip then I would say you're going to need a deep cycle system. Because yeah. you, you know after that many deep cycles that you know that many you're cycles going kill you're, going you're going to damage a good battery yeah and i think there again it's it's really for the education for people to understand mm. what is this mystique that surrounds dual battery management mm. systems yeah. how best does the right product with the right yeah. battery suit my personal uh, yeah but now okay let's talk batteries let's talk deep cycle batteries we've got the delco the standard 105 amp been around forever good, good solid yeah, battery good solid. Uh, but it is a semi-deep cycle, so you need the up, you need the more expensive charger, in my view, to get the most out of the battery. But what about now, uh, red tops, blue tops, yellow tops? Look, I found that when we use the red tops, the orbitals, yes, the, the, the orbitals, the mm. Optima batteries, Optima. Mm. exceptionally good batteries. Yes. What really the downfall of those batteries is people didn't understand using the deep cycle battery, which on a trip would often fall flat on its face because they didn't understand how to recharge that battery efficiently. So they're using the wrong recharge. So they're using the wrong recharger or they're using the wrong uh, double dual battery management system yes. or they're not putting a charger on. And also it was quite a small battery capacity wise. Yes. 55 amp hour. Yes. Okay. Not a huge battery. And really what you're looking for is capacity. So even two of those in the vehicle will give you 110. That's yeah. great. Can you replenish them in the right way and charge them up properly? Mm -hmm. We're only going to do it one of two ways, in my opinion. You're either going to use a good quality, as you've mentioned, deep cycle, um, dual battery management system, which mm -hmm. can actually put the higher voltage in, mm -hmm. or you're going to use a battery charger, and you're going to be charging it off the mains. Yeah. And sure. that's not ideal. We're in the bush. We haven't got mains. Absolutely. So, so you know, that's great battery. Mm. But I found that because of the misunderstanding, it wasn't my battery of choice so for again, deep it's, cycle. It's an application thing. Okay, yeah. do you know anything about the lead crystals, the new lead crystal batteries? You know, it's a new technology. I haven't used it, so I can't really comment. I've heard they're amazing. Yeah. I've heard that you can kill these things stone dead, mm. and they just suck it up the moment you, you know. No, there's not, there probably isn't a battery on the market that you could actually say is a bad battery. Often it's the application that the battery is used for. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, we used Odyssey in England, and Odyssey batteries are fantastic. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of very good batteries around the world. The technology is changing all the time. My thing is really that people need to understand what do they need mm. from this battery? How are they going to charge the battery? Where are they going? It's, it's, bat it's power management. Mm. That's really what it's about. Mm. And understanding power management, you know, takes a lot of insight and you need someone who can advise you properly.